Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and in this video, I will be disassembling the brake lines, the master cylinder, and the pedals for the braking system. Before we get started, we'll take a look here at the overall system, starting with the master cylinder and the brake pedal. And the brake pedal will force a plunger into the master cylinder that forces brake fluid through a various series of lines and hoses to get fluid to actuate the brake cylinders, which actuate the brake pads inside the drums to stop the vehicle. Take you across here, we can get a good look at the front axle. You see the series of hoses and systems there. Travel across the axle, there's our steering components. Go over the top of the actual differential housing and into the opposite side of the front axle. From the master cylinder rearward on the frame, you can see the brake lines travel inside the frame and are held in place with a series of clips. And they, as they return, they come across on the rear cross member. And we'll take a look here. You can actually see the machine gun mount. And then we'll come back to the rear differential where that is split to either side of the rear axle. You see the series of lines there. And that would be the passenger side. Now we're heading back over to the driver's side. I'll start by removing the clutch pedal. Remove the return spring from the clutch pedal. I'm using a brake tool here to just simply snap the spring off. The return spring number is 630593. Remove the cotter pin that holds the washers in place on the shaft assembly. Remove the washers from the shaft assembly. And here we've got one, and then we've got two. According to the diagram, these are misplaced. They should be on opposite sides of the clutch pedal. Remove the bolt that goes to the lower portion of the actual brake arm. To remove the clutch pedal from the shaft assembly, I'll use a screwdriver just to get started with a little leverage, and I'll just wiggle the clutch pedal off the shaft assembly. Clutch pedal part number A405. Inside the pedal arm, you'll note here there's a little notch that's machined in, and that notch is locked into a woodruff key. To remove the woodruff key, we'll just use a brass drift and simply tap it out. Woodruff key part number 5036. To remove the brake pedal, remove the cotter pin that's on the stud on the rear side of the pedal assembly. And then after the cotter pin's removed, you have a washer here. And then you'll be able to push the brake pedal rearward and remove the plunger from the master cylinder. Plunger rod part number 637599. The rod that connects the shaft assembly to the lever assembly on the clutch can be removed by taking the cotter pin out and remove the rod from its location in the shaft assembly. Connecting rod number A499. I've already removed the cotter key from the lower side of the tie bar that I'm showing here that I'm removing. And right now, I'm working on the long bolt that goes through the entire assembly, including the master cylinder. And here you see the long bolt, it's removed. Remove the short bolt that is threaded into the casing of the master cylinder. I'll keep my hand on the tie bar here, and then I'll pull it away from the actual shaft assembly. Tie bar part number A1354. Unlike the clutch pedal, there's no notch in the brake pedal, so you can simply remove it from the shaft assembly. Brake pedal part number A8253. Remove the third and final washer from the shaft. Remove the shaft from its location on the frame. Shaft assembly part number A495. Using a socket, I'm going to remove the cover from the top of the master cylinder and see what kind of situation we have on fluid. Here's where you'd want to remove as much fluid as you can from the actual cylinder. And luckily for me, there's not much in here. Well, that was a little bit dangerous, but the Jeep still did stop, which kind of surprises me. Using a flare nut wrench, I'm going to remove the two metal brake lines that are attached to the Y brass fitting on the front side of the master cylinder. The brake light switch is threaded into a fitting on the front side of the master cylinder. I'm going to use a rag to protect the metal and use a pair of channel locks to get it started and finish out by turning it out of the master cylinder by hand. Brake lamp switch, part number A1271. Remove the machine bolt from the front side of the master cylinder. Once the machine bolt is removed, we can take a close look and see some very important pieces to the braking system. You'll notice here that there's a copper crush washer on the front side of the Y fitting. Then we remove the brass Y fitting. And then you'll notice also on the back side of the bolt, there is another copper crush washer. These are what seals the front of the master cylinder to your brake lines and are very important. I have one long bolt remaining that's threaded into the back side of the master cylinder that I need to remove from the frame. 
Holding the master cylinder with my opposite hand, I'll remove the final threads out of the back side of the bolt and the master cylinder will be removed from the frame. Master cylinder assembly, part number A556. The metal brake lines are connected to the rubber flex lines on the front side of the axle here, and I should have had a clip here holding this into the bracket on the frame. I'll use two flare nut wrenches to remove the metal line from the rubber line. The rubber brake line that I'm removing is attached to a T brass fitting that is bolted to the front axle. Looking down onto the top of the axle, you can see the brass T, and I'm using my flare nut wrench again to remove the rubber hose at the attachment at that particular fitting. I've got a rag below me here because there's some fluid in the lines here, and it's a little bit as a mess as I can make the better, but you can see where that's attached. Remove the two metal lines that go on opposite sides of the brass T fitting. Once both brake lines are detached from the brass fitting, you can then remove the bolt that is threaded into the axle and remove the fitting itself. Finish on threading the bolt by hand. Show it to you here. And that's the bolt that goes into the front axle. Then we can reach down and finish disconnecting the metal brake lines and remove the actual T brass fitting. I'm going to remove the clip that goes to the frame that holds the flex hoses in. I'll just simply tap the back side with the brass drift and then I can use my channel locks to finish pulling the clip away. Once you remove the clip, you will be able to use two flare nut wrenches to remove the metal line from the flexible rubber line. The rubber hoses you see here are badly damaged and cracked and on these, this protector there was supposed to be one of the clips that retains the actual hose to the actual protector. The S-shaped brake lines are a little difficult to get at, but with a little work you can get them out and use your hands to disconnect them from your brake cylinder. On the top of the S-fitting, this is a little difficult to get at as well. I've got a stud that's coming out of the top of the axle that's making it difficult for me to get my flare nut wrench in, so I'm just using a pair of vice grips here to secure it and remove it from the frame. The S-shaped metal brake line can now be removed. The hoses and lines on the opposite side of the axle are removed in the same manner as just shown. The brake line that travels the length of the axle is attached to the axle using two clamps and two brackets that are mounted through the bolts on the differential cover. Two clamps secure the line to the tube of the axle. Use a flat-headed screwdriver and a wrench to remove the bolt from the clamp. Once the bolt's removed, open up the clamp and try not to damage it. These old clamps are very difficult to replace and the original ones are very, very nice. And once you can take it off the axle, you can reform it and we'll reuse that again. Remove the two bolts from the differential cover that hold the brackets to the top side of the brake line. Once the differential bolts are removed, the bracket will easily be removed from the top side of the differential. With the brake line removed, save the actual brackets off the old brake line. They can be cleaned up if they're not rusted or in bad shape and can be reused. Starting at the front side of the frame, the rear brake line travels through the inside of the C-channel on the frame. Here you can see where there's a bracket that's bolted through. It comes around the back side onto a clip in the rear of the frame and then upwards inside of the cross member where the machine gun mount is. There's a clamp inside there and a clip inside the frame that holds the flexible rubber hose that travels down to the rear differential. On the rear differential, there's a brass T that is fastened to the cover in a similar way as to the front. As you see here, the brake line is a little bit more complicated than the front with a couple more curves, but basically the same principle. I'll remove either side of the brake lines from the brass T. Once the lines are removed, I can remove the bolt that holds it to the bracket that's connected to the rear differential. The difference in the rear differential clip is a single clip as opposed to the two that are on the front differential. Separate the two brake lines from the brass T. The brass T fitting can now be removed from the rear flexible rubber line. Brass T fitting part number 637432. Remove the bolt from the clamp attached to the tube. Remove the clamp from the tube of the axle that is fastening the brake line to it. Remember, original clamps are hard to come by, so be sure to be careful and save what parts you can and reuse them in the future. They can clean up easily and be painted. Using a flare nut wrench, remove the brake line that is attached to the brake cylinder on the driver's side and remove the line. 
Before I can remove the passenger side line, I'll have to remove the bracket that's attached to the rear differential cover with a bolt. Remove the bolt and you'll be able to remove the clip and the brake line from the differential housing. With the clip removed, you'll be able to undo the brake line on the passenger side with a flare nut wrench and remove it. Be sure to save the clip if it is reusable. Remove the small bolt and the clip from this location on the side of the frame. I'll turn around the camera from the outside. You can see where the bolt actually goes through. That needs to be removed prior to anything. And we'll come back underneath our rear cross member and we'll see where the flexible hose attaches again. There's a clip that has to be removed that goes behind the brass fitting and holds the flexible holes in. And we'll take a couple of flare nut wrenches and remove that fitting. Once the flexible hose is removed, travel down the right side or driver's side from where I'm sitting and you will find a small bolt and a clip that's in the inside of the cross member. I'll go around the outside with the camera here so you can see where the bolt is. You remove that and you can drop down the brake line and you'll see the clip and where the hole is in the frame. On the side of the frame, there's a clip that's welded in. You press up simply on the brake line and remove it and then work out the brake line from the rear. Once the brake line is removed, your brake system and lines are disassembled. Thank you for watching. We are disassembling and reassembling a 1943 Willis MB. If you'd like to follow along with the progress and subscribe to us, you can subscribe to us at Team G503 on YouTube. Thank you to Ron Fitzpatrick and Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Until next time, keep it safe and happy jeeping.